Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today we're going to cover the topic which is knowledge codification. So how can we codify knowledge? There are many ways. For example, there is a business scenario. From this business scenario, we want to make people understand as well as machine to understand this. So there are many ways to codify this business scenario where we can use knowledge mapping, we can also use decision three, decision table, if then else, and many more. So today, I'm going to show you from this problem statement or business statement, how to turn it into knowledge codification using two techniques. Let's take a look at the first technique, which is making a decision table. Okay, let's take a look at this business statement. A customer requests a cash, a cash withdrawal. So that's what they intend to do, a cash withdrawal. One of the business rules, the rules for the ATM is that the ATM machine pays out the amount. So that's the action or the outcome. So you have to make sure that you understand what is the action. The action here is machine pays out the amount. So that's the action. What is the condition? You have to make sure that you know what's the action. Next, the condition. If the customer has sufficient funds, so that's the first condition. If the customer has sufficient fund in their account, so that the first, that's the first condition. Condition one. Or if the customer has the credit granted. So that's the condition two. What it meant is that if the customer has sufficient fund, first condition, the action would be ATM machine pays out the amount. The action. Next, if the customer has credit granted, the ATM also will, will pays out the amount. So that's the two condition with one action. From here, as you understand the business case, we learn how to create a decision table and a decision tree. You can as well create if-then-else statement for the computer to understand. Um, you remember that we are now use, using or trying to learn the technique of knowledge codification. Codification. While there are many techniques, that the one that we are going to learn is that it's about developing a decision table. From the scenario that you have understand just now, you have identified conditions. There are two, and there's one action. How can we create this decision table? Is that we have to make sure that we know what are the conditions and, as you know, there's two, and there's one action. This is a simple example for you to understand. What are the two conditions? Let us write the condition. The conditions are, number one, if the customer has sufficient fund. So, customer has fund in the bank. Number two, it's customer has credit granted. Credit. Two conditions. There's only one action which is ATM pays out. So, Two condition, one action. We then have to create all probabilities. What are the probabilities? Number one, the first probability is that P1, first probability, customer has fun. Two, has credit, false. The first probability that could happen, if they have fun, the action is as you understand the business case, ATM pays out. 
this is what will happen. The second probability is that there's a possibility that customer has no fund, false, but they have credit granted. This is true. What will happen is that the ATM still pays out to the credit granted. Second probability. There could be probability as well from the scenario is that the customer might not have fund and might not have credit granted. So automatically, ATM will not, will not pay any money because no fund, no credit granted. The final probability is that there could be a possibility where the customer has fund, true, as well as the customer has credit granted. If these both are true, they have fund, they have credit granted, obviously machines, the ATM machine will pay out. So these are the probability that can could happen. You might ask a question, how many probabilities are there? The easiest way to find this out would be how many conditions are there? Conditions powered by 2. In this case, there are two conditions powered by 2 would be 4 probabilities. 1, 2, 3, 4 probabilities. Anyway, there might be a possibility where you want to omit this probability and that's fine because there's no way people can take out money if they have no fund and they have no credit granted. So you can omit this out or you can keep it. So that's how you create a decision table. In the next module, we're going to use the same business case to create or codify using another technique which is decision three. Right, um, we have covered the first technique of knowledge codification just now, which is decision table. Going to the next one is that we're going to learn how to create a decision three, still using the first given business case. So what's the condition like? We know that it's about ATM. That's the business case. So the first condition is, in drawing the three, is that Customer has sufficient fund. That's the first condition. So customer has sufficient fund. What will happen is that when they have sufficient fund, ATM pays out the money. So in drawing the three, we go from the first condition and the action which is ATM pays out. But there's another condition that we have known just now, which is if the customer has no sufficient fund, there could be a possibility that customer has credit granted. And if this happened, the action is number four, the machine pays out. So this is how you can draw a simple decision tree by knowing what's the business case, what are the conditions, number one and number three, and there'll be two actions that happen, which is ATM pays out in this condition, as well as ATM also pays out if they have credit granted. So this is a simple decision tree that we can use as a technique for knowledge codification. For your information, by understanding this table, we can also codify using if then else statement for machine to understand, just like an algorithm. We'll cover that in class. Thank you.